Here we go. Scale of one to ten. <laughs> Scale of one to ten. How much do you now trust Dak Prescott to keep this up over these final six games? Now, this is interesting. Yes, Skip, it is. I, because, you know, honestly, I find it interesting. We, we, we talked about it after that game, the San Francisco game, and I, and, and I went, I told you I spoke with Dak, and I told you they, they demarked this moment. And, and you asked me, what did what, what CD text me? I said, they're cooking with grease. Yep. They have been on fire on ever fire. since. And they have been cooking with grease. Now, now my confidence is about an eight, and it's always been that. I mean, it's been that before uh, uh, the 15 interceptions last year and even after the 15 interceptions last year. With the, because I considered last year to be an exception, not the norm. It was an exception, not the norm. Dak, Dak, Dak has taken care of the ball pretty good over his career. Last year, when he had this, 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 this issue and a lot of those interceptions were going off hands and everything, it, people made it such a thing. Even though he was still carving out a 12-win season, they made it such a thing that now in your mind and in most people's mind, Dak has had a career Throwing interceptions like Brett Favre. Folks, that's just not the reality. That's what it does when they just we say this so many times a year. It's not the reality. So my faith in Dak and Dak taking care of the football has always been pretty good. Yes, he had that bleep last year. But, but I'm confident now. What I'm looking forward to seeing is going down this stretch. What I loved is what I heard, not out of anybody, but but, but Aaron Rodgers, I heard him yep. talk about this the other day. And I'm going to tell you something. I used to watch that from the time that got the job right here in L.A. And I was talking to Jerry in that box. I said, there's our quarterback right there. Look at that guy. Look at this guy with confidence. I, 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 I want to watch Dak now go to that next level. I, I always say, I want to see Dak play quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers control everything. Not just his throws. I'm talking about he's watching you sub people in, and if you got 12 people on the field, hut, hut, I'm, I'm getting those five yards. I want that kind of control. And, that, and now I heard Aaron Rodgers himself say that Dak Prescott is playing with some of the utmost control. Dude, I didn't even need Santa to come down my chimney <laughs> after I heard that. That was my Christmas gift. I, that, that was it. I told Santa, don't worry about it. Pass right on by this house. I'm good. That's what I needed to hear. Dak is playing at a level that I'm telling you right now, I can't wait to see what happens tonight. We all been talking about it. Oh, let's see what happens when they play against a team with a winning record. Let's see what happens. I've already heard Key Mutter. Oh, they got six wins. I don't want to hear that. Is it a winning record or not? The answer would be in the affirmative. So after this, will you shed your own up and let's move forward? I'm just saying to all of y'all, let's shed your own up. Now, now you want to make people seem like I'm up here talking to myself or something. No, I, I, I heard you mutter it. I heard you mutter it. You mutter it. <laughs> <laughs> what was the original question, Skip? Because my I, I lost my. It was my, a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. So I kind of. I think you said it. Yeah, one to, to ten. How much do you now trust Dak going down this stretch run of these right. games? I, I trust Dak. I've always oh. been a Dak supporter. I, always, all the way when I was at the other network, I've always been a guy who jumped on the table for Dak Prescott because I know he can play the position. Much like Michael said, to the degree of those that look at last season in the 15 interceptions or so, they make it seem, and I brought this to everyone's attention earlier this season when we had the conversations about what Dak Prescott was. Count them, slice it right down the middle. Half of them his fault, half of them circumstances that is out of his control. Drop balls, wrong routes, things of that nature. Right. When you look at it, they're not having those issues this year right now. But I also look at, and I, and I hate to do this because it's a, 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 a great time for you Cowboy fans, but I also look at the, 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 the type of competition defensively that they're going up against. Just without even looking at the statistical categories uh, from a defensive standpoint, the only solid defense that comes to mind is in week two against the New York Jets. As I look at down the list of opponents that they've beaten, those defenses are not Seattle, they're not, you know, they're not at the level that I want to see Dak Prescott excel in against the stiffer defensive competition. 
They're playing Seattle. Big, long corners that's going to try to get in your face and yeah. disrupt the timing. Can C.D. Lamb and Cook, Brandon Cooks, handle those sort of things? We've seen them do some stuff against lesser opponents on the defensive side, which is fine. It's past Skelly, which means it's seven on seven. They're just out there playing pitch and catch. That's okay, because if you can carry that on the rest of the season, as I said the other night when they took care of business on Thanksgiving, if Dak Prescott plays this way, the rest of the way in this somewhat of a gauntlet, starting with Seattle to Philadelphia, moving to Buffalo, moving to a starving Buffalo team that needs a win so bad to stay within playoff contention, the Miami Dolphins, the Detroit team that's probably going to be steaming mad that they're not going to get the respect going into Texas. Can he do that? And if he can do that, then the Cowboys are going to be fine and he's going to be fine. But if something comes up along the way and he starts to, or better yet, the play caller, Mike McCarthy, starts to tighten up yep. and do things the way that he's done them in the past and now we're going to have a different conversation about what the Cowboys are and what Dak Prescott is. But I believe in him. I just want to know, can he take the next step? Okay, that's the can, question. Can, that, that's the big okay, question. Can he is. take the next step? That's and really it. On your scale of confidence in I, him. I, I would probably say it's an eight. Okay. I would say eight, eight so, and a half. Okay, eight and a half. Michael's going seven. You're going no, eight. No, I, I went eight. I went eight. I you went eight. Okay, eight. okay, eight. Eight, eight and a half. I'm going to reiterate this question because to me, maybe I got my metallic blue colored glasses on today, but to me, the question we are now dealing with is the question of the entire National Football League season because I give you 49ers and I give you Eagles and they're about to play the game of the year oh, I can't wait. at Philadelphia. Oh, I, I can't give wait. you that. But yeah. if Dak Prescott can keep taking it up a level and a level, if if this is real and not a mirage, the rest of the league is about to be in big trouble. I'm, I'm just – this team is loaded. This team has Super Bowl potential. If the quarterback can play higher and higher levels the way he's been ascending since San Francisco up from the ashes of that game, if he keeps this up as his receivers – rise everywhere across the board. Everybody's sort of coming to the party all of a sudden. If this keeps going, then I believe this team can be a little better than San Francisco. I believe this team is better than Philadelphia. So this is the question. Can Dak continue to ascend? Because he has not done it before. He is in year number eight. His history would tell you it will be more hit than miss I mean, more, I should say more missed than hit down the stretch. He is still two and four in the postseason. His last two games against San Francisco were stinkers. But he did go to Tampa last year and out Brady Brady in the first round of the playoffs. He did. I know they were a sorry football team and Tom was dragging home. I, I got it. But he sent Tom into the sunset with a sensational performance. He threw for 304 touchdowns and no interceptions. But then he goes to San defense. Francisco. Yeah, I know. And San Francisco got his number and they've had his number three straight times. And I am hoping it's hope that Dak gets a third time is the charm chance in the postseason against San Francisco. That's just me. So here's what I say. I'm going to go to a seven on this scale. And remember, this is the, the jersey I threw in the trash after San Francisco. I did that because I'd seen enough because I got to live through Roger Staubach as my quarterback. I got to live through Troy Aikman throwing to this man to my right here as my quarterback. And my standards are Spoiled. They're spoiled high. I, I give you that. And Dak has never been quite able to live up to those standards as a fourth round draft pick. OK, so what do I sense now? I've been doing this a long time. Keyshawn and I go back and forth about this. I, I've been studying the game you guys played at the highest level for for many, many years. And all of a sudden you develop an instinct in the back of your mind. It's almost what I call a God voice. There's just this little voice in the back of your head. And it, it tells you through your eye test, what are you seeing? What are your instincts about this? Something has dramatically changed with Dak Prescott over the last five or six weeks. I am seeing serenity at that position. I'm seeing what Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. chose to point out. He's in complete command. He's in complete control. He has found a comfort zone 
in a shock to me with Mike McCarthy calling these plays to the point that I'm saying it's the Dak and Mac attack. There's something very different right now about Dak Prescott. And I do believe he can sustain this through these final six games. But if we then project into the postseason, I it's hard for me to be completely sold, but for me to go all the way up to a seven, having thrown his jersey into the trash, is significant at this point. So I believe he will play extremely well tonight, extremely well against Philadelphia, and sustain this down the stretch. And I'm giving him a really good shot of winning MVP because the schedule is tough enough to allow him to show you he's the MVP. See, th- 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 now you was good. You were mm. good for a while there, Skip. But then you said something that made mm. my ears perk up. Mm. You start talking Burn. about yeah. you start talking mm-hmm. about what Dak has been able to do, and he's playing exceptional. Yes, that is very true. You're not lying about that. But here's where the negative, the the the, the soreness in the brain gets to me, is the fact that he's always playing from ahead. Things are mm. easier to be able to do those sort of things. I, in, what, you want to say something? No, no, I key, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I, I, I can give you this. I can and, give you some of this, I may say. And what I, I want to give you some of this. What I want to see <laughs> is what I seen in Justin Fields the other night at the end of a game. What I want to see is what Jalen Hurts was able to do Every against game. the Buffalo <laughs> Bills no, 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 at not, the end of the now game. Now you have gone too far. What? Like, how can you bring Justin Fields in this? No, no, I'm just talking about. All I'm doing, Michael, is I'm, I'm going somewhere. I can't. I, you can't bring anybody that no, dip no, down hold, hold, the barrel hold, one time. I need somebody boy. that lays in the barrel. Will you sleeping. listen. Okay, come on. Give Will me you something. listen? I got to get there. Okay, get there. When I'm talking about Justin Fields, I'm not talking about the course of the game. I'm just talking about things went bad. Then all of a sudden, at the end of that game, that is he true. threw the football on two plays that got him in place to kick the field goal to walk off and win it. That they weren't great throws. No, but they, they were not. No, they, they were not. But guess what happened? Yeah. Those receivers bailed him they out. Did. Something right. and I'm getting there. Something I want to see Dak Prescott and his receivers do. Here's a scenario. I don't care which uh, game it is. 28-24, buck 30 to go one time out on your own 15 yard line. You need to win the game. I need to see that against a Seattle, against a Buffalo against a Miami. It doesn't have to be all of them. I just want to see it. That's all I want to see. Still because if you show me those sort of moments, now you got the Aaron Rodgers of the world. Now you got the Tom Brady of hell. You got Brock Purdy doing it. Mm-hmm. Now you got that. That is all I'm saying. I'm not talking about a inch uh, 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 from scoring a touchdown because your foot stepped out of bounds. You didn't win the game. That's right. all I'm right. saying. I want to see that so I can take him from an eight and eight and a half to a 10. Yeah, that's, that's the 10. That, that's all I'm saying, There's Michael. That's the 10. But There's I need the, the help from everybody else because it's not just all on him at the quarterback position. And that's what we rail over. That's what we go off rails at because, really, it, you, what you asked for uh, Justin Field, somebody, a receiver made a great play and bailed him out. It can't be a receiver making a great play because this is Dak Prescott. It's going to have to be, as you talked about and everybody just talked about right here, Dak lifting people up, not somebody saving Dak because we were going to point to, that was a bad throw. C.D. Lamb went and made the play. If C.D. Lamb didn't make that kind of a grab, Dak, um, you see what I'm saying? You it's put a it in the it's catch a radius, scale. Michael. I understand that, it, but it's different scales. It's different scales. That's why when it's Dak Prescott, he has to be above reproach. He has to be above reproach in his play because we're going to point out every little thing and every little mistake. And no matter what, how many of those 15 interceptions bounced off someone else's hands, we never talked about the someone else. We only talk about Dak Prescott because he's the star of the team that wears the star. He's the quarterback, and I understand all of that. Even though, think about it, how, how, how the hyperbole and the propaganda gets in one place. But what do we hear? It didn't beat a team when it went, when it went with the winning record. Is we that a lie? Go. No, yes, it is a lie. What, 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 did, did, didn't, the Jets, didn't they win a game before we played them? Michael Irvin, like that? I'm, if I'm just you saying, don't I'm, stop. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, it, you it, it's, don't it's say they won it, so it's a winning record. They were. 
Is that not a winning record? One and oh, what do we what else we call that? Is that a but lot? see what I'm saying? See, see what I'm saying though? But it didn't match the propaganda in the hyperbole, in the no. mess that they wanted to throw to everybody. So, so, so everybody just started saying what they heard. They hadn't beat a team with a winning record. Oh my Let's God, see what I'm Michael, saying. they were one and oh, it's the start of the damn season. Come on, man. All I ask by definition. That's all. You, you can go ahead. That's all I'm saying. Skip, I know you're not fit to sit up here and validate 1-0 and as a winning record. No, no. It, it was a top five defense when we put up 30. That was the best, best, oh, no, the best the defense, record. the best defense that y'all played against and beaten were the Los Angeles Rams sitting at 16th, mm. okay, in points per game allowed. I thought you loved the Jets' defense. You rave I thought, about them. I, 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 look. It was the second game of the right. season. But they, they were coming off a high. They had and that's all I'm saying. They Buffalo. beat Buffalo. Yeah. Well, all I'm Buffalo. saying is when they it comes to year, Dallas, they and I know more about this than a lot of people, we continue to move the goalposts back. We do. Move the goalposts back. Not we. He, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, so, but when so, you sitting up here, so, when you sitting up so, here trying to so, sell that the one and zero means that it's above five hundred, you really, you really. Gonna sell that? Like you really getting ready to be a you getting ready to be a used car salesman? It's, it's, it's like you selling they hadn't beat a team with a winning record. You know I what a winning record is, is, man. Come on, Michael. Don't do me like this. I can't. I can't go through that. Mm. I can't go through that. A winning record is winning record. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying, Key, is we don't worry about the facts because the story so y'all, gets so, so much. So you getting ready to play? Wanna... You getting ready to play a team tonight with a winning record, right? Correct. Okay. You, you are. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about this. You're already team. trying to let's, discount them, right. right? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying to discount them. What I am going to try to clear y'all brains of so my voice can seep inside your head so you can understand that the Seattle Seahawks have lost three of the last four. Okay, yes. they are not playing good football right oh, now. Oh, now you're Their moving the goalpost back the, again. Here, here comes that goalpost. It's what? moving back. It's, the goalpost. Make sure I don't fall off this thing, and I'm moving back. I hope but you I fall, see, because no, you're I not listening. <laughs> They're no one way. in three, Skip, in the last four. Okay. I gave you the offensive statistical numbers in those four games. Mm -hmm. Your defense should pin their ears back and go get Geno Smith. Mm -hmm. You should win by 10. And if you don't... I have questions with that, okay, that's considering fair. what type of team they are today. Not yesterday, but okay. today as you get ready to kick off at 8 o'clock Eastern time. All I think right. it's 8 o'clock Eastern. I think it's somewhere eight, eight there. 8.15 yeah. yeah. or so. Yeah. That's what I want to know. Okay. Not that we fair beat enough. a team that was 1-0 and with a quarterback that couldn't get out of his own damn way. All right. But the <laughs> issue at hand right now is if you look hard at Dak's stats, He's actually playing, if you go second level, third level, he's playing the best quarterback in the whole league. But I gave you that. Okay. That's what's happening. I just want to see it. Am I wrong, Skip, yeah, to want to okay. see it against uh, better you, defenses? You're, you're not wrong because the fourth level stat that I got to address, <laughs> this is my favorite one because it's so obscure, but Dak has dropped back 414 times so far this year. 414. He has thrown the football away three times. Only three times has he said, I don't like what I see, I throw it away. Aaron Rodgers, in his heyday in Green Bay, he would go year after year leading the league by far in throwaways. No, throwaways. Right, 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 right. Because he kept right. his interceptions, his interceptions so low. Down. That's because what I was thinking he would take one look, and if he didn't like it, he'd just dirt right, ball it. Right. Just, just dirt ball it. Just not throw it away. Ball right. He's not even going to try it. There are no tight window throws. I'm just throwing this away. I thought in part because he would protect his own stats. Sometimes you need to try a tight window throw. But the point for you, Keyshawn Johnson, is that Dallas has been destroying the opposition so badly, so completely, that Dak doesn't even need to think about throwing the ball away because people are open. I, he is I, finding I, open I, receivers I more than anybody is I, finding I, open I, receivers. I, I and by that. the way, if we go back to that Arizona debacle out in the de nightmare in the desert, remember, three starting offensive linemen, including two right. first ballot Hall of Famers, did not play in that game. I'm going to knock on wood. Right. I probably shouldn't even right. bring it up. Right now, but right now that line is Playing. Healthy and it is playing. It, it might be the best offensive line. I know San Francisco is really go, good. You go okay, I'm this just telling you, you. This is where I'm you telling get you. yourself in trouble. Pass pass blocking, both lines are playing blocking. pretty good. Woo Dak has time to throw and he's in complete command. 
And that is a dangerous recipe for the rest of the league because it is operating at the highest level. And I think Seattle is going to get a big taste of that tonight. And then I think they can beat Philadelphia because I don't respect Philly's defense as much as you do, Keyshawn. And I hope Dallas is focused on Philly now. We, yeah. we got a lot of people up here talking you about mean Seattle. Yeah, I mean, I mean Dallas focus on Seattle. Seattle. Sorry, excuse me. Seattle. Even I'm doing it. Even I'm doing it because we know because y'all you know you and Skip been doing it we, all week long. We, worried we, about the damn Eagles we, we, when you got the Hawks in front of you. Wrong Bro, bird. Hey, you just sat Wrong here, bird. Skip. You just I mean you just said a key and said let me see you do it. Going down the road, yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that thinking well, about going down the road. Tonight. I want you thinking about tonight. It, it, it starts two tonight. Night. If, if you don't think about tonight, that road gonna be so bumpy, paved with such valleys, pain. peaks and valleys, nothing but pain there. Yeah. And by by and right at the hand of this dude that is, that's right over here talking you go, that noise. Y'all go stop. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's just take care tonight. Mm. Take <laughs> Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.